As we continue reading this week in the Exodus, Israel is going through a huge period of relationship adjustment. They've been slaves in Egypt, but now they're a free people. They're the people of God, and God will dwell with them personally. What does that even mean? There's so many kinks that need to be worked out, so God calls them to Mount Sinai and gathers them, and begins to speak through Moses. What's happening here is he's defining the relationship that they will have, showing them what it means to be the people of God. We're also reading this week in the book of Proverbs. The first portion of the book has a discussion of what it means to follow the path of wisdom or the path of folly, what the consequences of each of these paths are. It calls us to diligence in seeking wisdom. But then beginning in chapter 10, you have the Proverbs listed one after the other, each verse usually standing alone, like a bunch of little nuggets of wisdom gathered together in one place. It's almost impossible to digest all of those nuggets, but hopefully each time we go to the Proverbs, we find something that we can carry forward into our lives. In our New Testament readings this week, we're seeing two people who are living as those who are prepared to die. First, there's Jesus. In Matthew, we're moving towards the cross now, and he's warning them that this is coming. He spends a lot of his time working with his disciples on what it means to follow him. It's a path that involves suffering and self-denial and sacrifice. And then as he arrives at Jerusalem and begins having confrontations with the religious establishment there, we see Jesus speaking truth fearlessly as somebody who knows death is in front of him and he's not trying to avoid it. Likewise, Paul, in the letters we're reading today, they're the prison epistles, and he is in prison awaiting trial, knowing that he may well be condemned to death. And yet the letter of Philippians that he writes is the most joyful of all of his letters. He says, hmm, I might die, and then I'll be with Jesus. Or I might live, and then it'll mean more fruitful service for me. Either way, I win. It's that sort of hopeful perspective where all fear is gone that gives him the moral authority to say something like, do not be anxious about anything. 